Hi, I'm Peter Kelmström of Kelmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll continue working on the rental agreements solution, which is a SharePoint example where I've created a content type with two lists attached to it. And the reason I've created two lists is that I want to have different permissions on those lists, and I feel that using two lists is preferable over having an item level security in most cases. And also I get to show how to do a reusable workflow, which is a good thing. When I set up my content type, I set a renewal date, and that renewal date is supposed to be filled out automatically based on the end date. So I have a business rule about that. Renewal date should be set to two months before end date if not filled out. So that's the business rule that we're going to implement now in SharePoint Designer. So I've opened the resource management site in my SharePoint Designer. And now I'm going to go into the workflows and create a reusable workflow. Um, that's going to set the renewal date. And as you see, the SharePoint 2013 workflow cannot yet be set to any particular content type. So I need to set that. I need to use a SharePoint 2010 workflow. And I'm going to connect that to the rental agreement content type. And then I'm going to start using that. I'm going to start with a condition if current item field equals value. And the field I'm going to be using is, of course, the renewal date. And if that is not equals but less than, and then if a filled out date is going to be probably in the 1970 range. So I'm going to take that out and instead just fill that out. And there we go. I'm going to type in the value there. And that's going to be a specific date. So let's just put that to 1970. So if I have left that empty, then the date is less than that date. And if that is true, then I'm going to do an action and I'm going to use the add time to date action. So I'm going to add two. Actually, I'm going to add minus two, not minutes, but months to the date, which is, of course, the date of the current item end date. I'm going to output that to a variable, create a new variable just to get a good name on it, renewal date. Be there to point out that it is a variable date instead of the value in the item. All right, and then I'm going to set the value of the current item. So action here, update list item. There we go, update list item. And the item I want to update is, of course, the current item. I want to set the field renewal date to the value of the workflow variable renewal date. OK, OK. And then I'm going to remove that date uh, variable, which I'm not using. Makes it clean. And then I'm going to make sure that this workflow runs. And of course, in a renewable workflow, I can only disable. So when I activate this workflow, that's when I'm going to set it to automatically run on item creation. So first, I need to publish this workflow. And once that's done, I'm going to go into the content type and activate the workflow. I'll go into site settings under the web designer galleries. I'll find the content types. And I have all my content types neatly in the Contoso group. So I'll go into the rental agreements and look at the workflow settings. And as you see, it doesn't have any workflows associated with it, even though I just published it. But it's available, so I can add the workflow to the content type here. So I'll set the renewal date. And um, unique name can be set. The renewal date can be the same as the published workflow there. And now I will activate this. And finally, I'm going to set this workflow to run automatically when creating a new item. And actually, I can do it on change also. Now, if I go into my lists and check the list settings and the workflow settings, I will have this workflow associated with that content type, set renewal dates. So that's all as it should be. Now I can just go in and make a, an edit to this item. I'll just edit the entire list like that. Put it warehouse one underscore one just to make a change, whatever. And uh, then I'll stop editing. And eventually we should see this workflow running. And here you see it's adding a column there. If I don't want the column, I can just modify the view and uncheck the box there for set renewal date, which is the name of the workflow. 
and eventually now we should see the date being set and as you see it's um, in the two months before the end date so that's working as it should let me do the same thing on the other one i'm going to edit the list change the store just do something like that change stop editing and um, you can also of course create a new item store two and set the end date to um, set it to first of december just going to set that so that should be first of october eventually so i'll save that fresh there you see that the date got set for that one and that one got set also for the first of october and finally i'm just going to remove the set renewal date column from the view then we're all set so we have implemented that business rule that the renewal date should be set to two months before end date if not filled out next time i will do a video on uh, setting out that email with contract details on the renewal date thank you for watching this demonstration